What is up, everybody? My name is Justin Alvarado, and welcome to the MVP Podcast. And today, I am joined by my partners. We got Kirk Reyes, who is our COO, or Chief Operating Officer, right there. Hello, hello. And then we got Bert Veracruz, who is our Chief Marketing <laughs> Officer, on my right. <laughs> On my left is Jasper Balmas, who is our Chief Financial Officer. And last but not least, Justin Francisco, our Chief Administrative Officer. And yeah, welcome to the first ever podcast of My Valuable Player. And today we're just going to talk about a few questions that the community has for us. So yesterday we just posted an Instagram story where we asked about people... Uh, if they wanted to know anything more about sports cards or my valuable player. And uh, yeah, we summed up some responses, although uh, we can't respond to each and every one because uh, we love you guys, but there's a lot of responses. So we just, um, we tallied the responses and we just picked the ones that we thought were going to bring most val- the most value to everybody. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get it rolling. Okay lang kayo dyan, guys. Okay <laughs> lang, um, Yeah, just to uh, put it out there, um, these are my partners and we do talk like almost every night. So, um, yeah, boys, let's just be on our best behavior. <laughs> no, sure. <laughs> yes, boss. Okay. So, uh, we, got, we got a question from um, Lance John de Guzman. On Instagram, he said it would be great if you guys could teach uh, the basic knowledge about collecting, trading, selling, buying, investing. So, like, maybe Bert would be best to answer this. What would you um, say to uh, John, Lance John de Guzman on how to get started with basically everything in the hub? Uh, yeah, so first of all, I'd like to thank. Uh, Lance for asking that great question. Um, you know. <laughs> I guess what what I could say about that is that um, siguro I'll talk based from like my own experiences and um, I started not too long ago lang when it comes to collecting cards and I guess I would uh, classify myself as an investor rather than a collector. Um, I think it's important at the start for you to differentiate yourself on what you would classify yourself as, what type of um, person you would be in this hobby. So for me, it was an investor, meaning I would buy different cards that I believe would um, increase in value, and hopefully in the future I could sell it for a profit. Um, aside from that, um, there are also collectors out there. Collectors are different from investors because they mainly focus on, um, yeah, like what the name suggests, collecting collectors, collecting cards. Um, most people who are collectors they usually collect either players from the same team or um, cards of the same player. So you could see a lot of Michael Jordan collectors out there, um, especially since not all Michael Jordan cards would um, cost a lot. So yeah, they're out there. And um, the main difference then is that uh, collectors, they mainly focus on one certain aspect of the hobby, which is just getting a certain type of player or a certain type of player from a certain um, that's the main difference between the two. Um, going back, um, I said earlier that I classified myself as an investor. Um, I, I got into this ho- in this hobby looking to make a quick flip or a quick return in my investment. So I actually started by investing in a couple of LeBron James 29 reserves. Um, I got a couple of PSA 10 LeBrons for about uh, $200 each. And I think uh, they maxed out at about eight hundred dollars, but then recently they've experienced a kind of like yeah. a spurge. They've been going down recently. Um, I think now they're about four hundred dollars a pop, so not bad. I not mean, still, still in the money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, still up there. But then, um, I I'm guess an important an important thing for investors then is to know mm-hmm. when to sell and when to hold your cards. Definitely. Um, for me, because I thought that during the playoffs, LeBron's cards would uh, increase in value, but then that didn't happen. Instead, it actually went down. Um, 
I don't know why, but that, that's just how the market is. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Okay. Well, <laughs> hopefully uh, <laughs> that answers uh, Lance Ligo's question. Hopefully, so hopefully. I mean, if you have any more questions, Lance, just don't, don't hesitate to send us a DM. Maybe we could um, email talk email. privately. Yeah, we also have an email. You could reach us at assist at myplayer.com. Sounds yes. very legit. <laughs> My, my valuable player.com. At my valuable player.com. Ay, mali pa. Email. Nako po. Napaka legit. Yeah, we're always active. Just shoot us a DM. Email us. Yeah. Um, mainly, it's uh, Bert and Justin who handle the Instagram. So, if you have any questions, they'll be the one to answer most of the time. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah. Let's move on to the next question from uh, Migo Buenafe. So... He basically asked about the whole um, card splitting pro- uh, process. So, like, um, for example, if he buys a percentage of this card, he was wondering, like, when it will be sold, when will the money be returned, stuff like that. So, uh, Kirk asked the COO, you know, you know, the business, like, the back of your hand. How would you explain the card splitting process to someone who is a complete beginner? Okay, so card splitting um, basically is what we, we've been doing for the past few days. Uh, when you check our page, you see all the cards posted there. Card splitting basically is we allow different people to buy a specific card. We do this because the card basically, the prices are crazy right now if, you, if you've been following it. So for example, the LeBron James card is around, it, it, was, it was posted or not 95K. 95,000. So card splitting, we get multiple people so they can buy a percentage of the card. And how it works is when the card appreciates, say it becomes around 120, 150. Um, we then distribute the profits back to the people who bought, the amount of percent that they bought. Um, the terms are if one season or 60%, whichever comes first. However, 60% is flexible. If the card is expected to grow more, we will keep the card. If the card is expected to crash, we will cut losses and sell the card. But when one season, is, when the season is finished, um, it's strict. So most likely, we will have to sell the card, regardless of what's happened to the card. So okay. yeah, that's the basics of it. There you go, Migo Buenafe. But if I'm not mistaken, Migo Buenafe actually got into some LeBron James. Yes, sir. He's one of yeah. the clients. <laughs> uh, no, maybe he's class. asking for a friend. I don't know. But I do remember taking some classes in uh, DLSU with Migo Buenafe. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Shout Same out to Migo Buenafe. Um, I'd, l- I'd like to uh, <clears throat> backtrack to what Bert mentioned a while ago. Uh, I think it's this topic is very uh, it's not very talked about because like okay when you get into the hobby you know it's it's exciting and all that um, you see people sharing stories you now oh I made this amount of money um, in this amount of time it's crazy but what people don't like to talk about is what happens when prices actually go down what happens when something doesn't go your way because you um, love. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the positive, right? <laughs> Pero when you're so in the what negative. Do you do, Alex? What do you do when prices go down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me so personally, uh, it personally. depends. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> for, if I'm looking for a quick flip with the card and it goes down, sometimes you're going to have to take a loss. You know, uh, it's, not, it's not ideal, but what I. If you're a quick, if you're looking for a quick flip, if you're looking for like um, this team to go into the playoffs, you're banking on that team to get into the playoffs um, with a deep run, and then like they're down three zero. Sino pina patamaan natin? Sino ba? Sino ba player then? Once they're down, sometimes you just have to, you know, bite the bullet. But if it's a good long term hold, like players young player is uh, not very injury prone and man, then yeah I'd hold until next season or the seasons beyond because uh, sky's the limit 
I mean, just look at LeBron James mm-hmm. rookie cards. Uh, PSA 10. I don't know. Those prices mm-hmm. are absolutely crazy. So, sure. but I'd like to ask about, um, I like Jasper actually to expound on that because uh, Jasper has some experience with uh, stocks and some people like to um, attribute uh, sports cards to stocks because um, some people treat it as an investment, you know, it's um, something that's happening right now. So like given your knowledge in stocks, what do you do when uh, prices are go down? are going down. Yeah. All right. So um, a lot of this is personal, but then we all think as a team together on which cards to, you know, to purchase and which to acquire. So um, basically alternative investments, because uh, you, you get them for the long run. Um, if you do f- try to flip them, you're only looking at like, what, 1,000, 2,000 pesos patong. We, we kind of planned ahead for this. So we may have bought it this season, but then, you know, some of them don't do really too well. So we're expecting them to still have an opportunity to rise the next season. That's why for us, if it goes down just, just a little bit or by a lot in a span of a few days, then, you know, it's still, it's still best to hold. Like the value hasn't disappeared yet. There's still potential. And it can still go up. Okay. Um, just a follow up to that. Uh, like, okay, so we planned like the exit strategy, right? So when is it the best time to enter? Do you enter uh, or buy a card when, for example, uh, let's say Zion? Uh, Zion Williams and PSA 10s. Uh, those have been going down ever since he got eliminated from the bubble. And people have been selling. Um, do you actually buy that because you see value in that? Or do you, for example, who's been going up? Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero has been going up. So do you ride the trend and buy Tyler Hero? Or do you buy the one that everyone's actually selling? Yeah, yeah. No, um, that's actually a common question especially when you're trading stocks. And I think in this industry, it's called like hype or um, like the cards in heat right now because everyone wants it. Um, Generally, it's called um, market noise. What that means is everyone wants it. Everyone's talking about it. So that already, like just people talking about it increases the value. So it doesn't really reflect the potential of the card. Because what reflects the potential, like a big chunk of it at least, especially with NBA trading cards, is it's the player's hell. Um, it's how many points is he making per game? How many minutes is he on, on the court? Um, it's all of these factors that, that come in. So for me, okay, here, this is how I would, um, these are the principles that I stand on before I choose an investment. So the first thing that I would think of for a card investment is the player's health. Is he old? Has he had any injuries? Would these injuries, if he does get injured again, would it maim him for life? You know what I mean? Would it make him retire? Um, That's generally what I think of first. And second, I look at the card price history because some players are really good, but then the prices don't go go up because just like stocks, it's... They're also blue chip players, you know what I mean? Like, like what they mentioned, there's LeBron's. Um, I don't want to name any others, but there are blue chip cards, and you can tell the values are high, and they've always been high, but they don't go up as fast as a Zion, for example, or like yeah. they don't increase two two digits. It's just it's just very minimal, but the value is there. And then lastly, what I would, what I would think of is can I afford it? Like, if I were to lose this money right now, mm-hmm. would I be okay with it? W- would I be in debt? Like, that's another thing. You're not supposed to be in debt when you invest in cards or in anything. In, in anything. As a matter of fact, that's fucking stupid. Yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yes. Anyway, my, never my borrow point. money to invest. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. My main point is, with those three principles, none of them relate to height. None of them relate to what what others are thinking. Um, so that you know, just take my advice for what it is, and then you see if it fits your lifestyle or what you're aiming for. Yeah, so that's what I would do. Uh, yeah, I completely agree with uh, Jasper. Um, you know, different amount of money, different goals. Uh, yeah, it really depends on you as a person. You know, not everyone can buy a graded card. Not everyone um, can buy like a LeBron RC. But of course, si Alves, he buys full graded cards, pal. Eh. Oh, nga. Yes, <laughs> can you show us your cards, all, bro? All day, eh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a humble collection. <laughs> wow, wow. Humble yeah, collection. Humble, yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, mean, humble collection man. I don't like have that? anyone who's like crazy in value, you know. Meron pa ako yung mga... Dude, show us the Luca, bro. Tire, tire show us the Luca. Tapos mo na yung Luca Silver mo, bro. But um, anyway, uh, like Bert and Jasper touched up on this. And we uh, made fun of this pair a while ago. Going back to Giannis. <laughs> right, right. You learn. Right. Um, you got a question from Goat Yan, Goat Yan, <laughs> Goat Yan, bro, Goat. You're the deer. You mean no? Scotty Pippen, the man of the man of the week. Talking about Yan, this is Scotty Pippen. God damn. We got a question from La- not Lance Chua. He asked, "Will Yanis oh, go up <laughs> yeah. again? Will Yanis go up again?" Justin, uh, our card guy. So. Uh, yeah, Justin, what do you see in Giannis prices short term and long term for our friend Lance Chua? <laughs> so now the question of the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, like with most most cards, their value can partly be determined uh, by their performance, like what Jasper mentioned earlier. The performance of the player during a game or a certain stretch of games. It just happens, it just happens to be the most important stretch of games now for Giannis this season. And the Bucks haven't been performing up to everyone's expectations and they're currently down 3-1 against the Miami Heat. Um, yeah, man, I, honestly, Giannis has been doing pretty okay, like, uh, numbers-wise. But then I yeah. think, like, as a team and how the Bucks haven't been yeah. able to uh, translate that into, like, dubs like they did in the reg- regular season. <laughs> yeah, so... Everyone thought it would be an easy sweep for the first seed. So yeah. Yeah, and everyone everyone yeah, everyone including us wanted to get in the Giannis the Giannis <sighs> game. But then mm-hmm. yeah, this past week happened and Giannis injured his um ankle in game three. Then he decided to play in game four, which I guess helped them get the dub in a way. Because he was the only player performing in the first half. So but then he also happened to ag- aggravate re uh, aggravate the ankle in the second quarter, I think. But good thing Chris Middleton was able to pick it up. But yeah, um, there's no news that if he's going to play um, next game. So that can potentially be a season under for him in the Bucks. But uh, with all that being said, um, the prices of the reigning MVPs, rookie cards, have dropped somewhat drastically over the span of the last few days. Um, but unlike the average player, uh, Giannis is the reigning MVP. He's a proven bona fide superstar. And he's actually, uh, what many are saying, he's actually bound to win his second MVP this season, which might lead to an awkward um, situation being <laughs> eliminated by the Miami Heat. But yeah, props to Miami. They're pretty good. But um, yeah. yeah, man, Giannis is just 25. He's considered, yeah, it's pretty young. I, I'd say, yeah, top three, top three player in the league. And let's not talk about Luca yet. But yeah, Giannis is up there and he's just 25 years old. So pretty safe to say that he's a stronghold investment uh stronghold uh, card wise yes, going into next season yeah but hopefully the bucks can give him the help he needs over the off season via free agency yeah. or a few trades let's but, bring yeah, his face yes sir but i think it's going to take a little more than chris middleton but then Giannis is is in a free agent this off season i think it's in 2021 so hopefully he doesn't ask for a trade or anything but then if he did, mm. that might increase his prices also, like if he went to Miami. But um, 
yeah, hopefully the Bucks give him the help that he needs to win a chip. And we can expect all his car. We can expect all cards actually in general to dip heading into the off season. Uh, like as more um, teams get eliminated, you can expect those players' cards to like like what we mentioned in Zion. Yeah, so those mm. cards are most likely gonna dip as they already are. And but as next season hypes up, as next season years, we should um, expect everything to bounce back. Hopefully, to um, the peak of its prices or even more. Okay. So like, to Giannis. Um, also to add, so like Giannis, LeBron, those those players, they're like, um, because they've made a name somehow for themselves. Then, their their That's prices right. cannot be um, predicted per game, unlike the, those players that are hyped. So every hot yeah. game they have, and, the price will go and up. And DJ, DJ. Well, like those players, the LeBron, the Giannis, um, their prices will go up if they achieve things. It's not per game basis. So, and yeah. it's not. Yeah, let's just pray. Come on, go Giannis. Yeah, like what Kurt was saying. Like we don't have to worry about Giannis. Is he gonna be? A superstar next season because yeah, I think that's already sure. given. It's not like it's not like if we have an MPJ card. It's, what's gonna happen on, to man. MPJ next season? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, on, a good man. example. Um, <laughs> I think Kirk has to like, MPJ PSA tens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you never know. Baka he's gonna be. You never know. Next season. You never know. You just you don't know bro. Next so KD on, bro. Next KD. Injury <laughs> to time. <laughs> But he hasn't been, but he hasn't uh, gotten injured this off season, so yeah, which is good. <laughs> Looking yeah. pretty, should be pretty hopeful. But yeah. All right. Yeah, so, yeah. what about like for example, because we uh, we do have a couple of uh, Giannis part owners. Uh, for example, like they hold um, until like next season. Do you see realistically the prices going back up to? what they were a few weeks ago? Or do you see it more as it's going to take more than just uh, next season? Um, well, Giannis is still potentially going to win the MVP this season. So that for sure will add value considering there are only three or five players, I'm not sure, uh, to win both defensive player and MVP in the season. But yun, yeah, the Heat... But he's still in the GOAT conversation because of that. Because I think, like, players including Michael Jordan and Hakeem Olajuwon are mm-hmm. a few of those players. But, yeah, there's still a lot of factors that we can hope over this offseason can increase his prices. You never know. The Bucks can land someone big this offseason, which will add to the hype going into the Bucks next season. We, he might get asked for a trade, land in Miami. We don't know. But, Man. yeah, um, unlike what Kirk was saying also, like, these types of players, you can't determine their performance on a game-to-game basis because we already expect them to put up these numbers every game. So, yes. if Giannis scored 30, 20, and 10 the next game, we wouldn't be that surprised. So, that wouldn't um, increase his prices, unlike if that happened to Michael Porter Jr. or someone. Mm-hmm. So, we should just hope for the hope. best. And I think, potentially, it can bounce back, but it might take a lot for... Be honest to yeah reach that again. Okay, just to add up on that, um, like we mentioned a while ago, uh, it's a given. Yanis prices have gone down, and um, the market that we're in right now, not everything um, is easy anymore. Yeah. You know, not like if you go back a few months ago, uh, yeah. buy any superstar chances are you could make good. good money. Mm. But now, uh, it's not exactly the case. So, uh, maybe Bert, um, how crucial is it to be transparent with people? You know, because like you're the head of marketing and Sir. it's, yeah, it's not, it's not easy money in, in the market anymore. So like, how important is marketing? Because I know, you know, it's, you know, it's easy to brag when you're in the green, but when you're in the red, uh, <laughs> wala kamot ulo, most people. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the importance of uh, being transparent? Yeah, I mean, 
being transparent when it comes to the data, it's one of the biggest things that we look at here. Today. Because not being transparent and lying about data could reflect, could, could reflect negatively towards the company. So um, for some of the shareholders there, I'm pretty sure you received all the price update pubs that we uh, sent uh, probably two days ago. And as you can tell, um, we are very honest when it comes to what we put there. Um, all of the data there are basically, we got all of the data from eBay averages. Um, we do not consider um, buy it now prices when it comes to eBay. Why? Because buy it now prices can sometimes be fake. Um, there are very rare um, <clears throat> occurrences where people would put in a listing below the regular price. Like let's say a Luka Doncic prison PSA 10 card that goes for about 1.7 to 1.8 USD. And if you go through the last sold items on eBay, you may find a same card, but it was sold for about $500. I mean, if you see that, you could freak out and be like, oh, this is such a steal. But don't, because mostly those types of um, transactions are mostly fake. So they do this to, to control and manipulate the market. Why do they do this? Um, some people want the prices to go down so it could be more affordable. I don't know. Um, but this could also go both ways. Some people could list a cheap card. Like, let's say... Okay, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Dude, <that's pretty> <laughs> I tried it. <laughs> Dude, because something popped up, eh. it said no. Oh, it's not a question. Can you ask the question again? Uh, yeah, so it could also go both ways. Um, some people could um, post a higher price for a player that is price cheap. So let's say a, um, who could I give this an example? Um, okay, let's just use a Tyler Hero card for example. Tyler Hero Prism PSA pants. I think they go for about three hundred, three hundred dollars a month. Around that price range, right? Above, so, a little above three hundred, yeah. Yeah, a little above three hundred. So some people could actually list the same card for about six hundred dollars, and you would see on eBay in the sold items that someone sold it for six hundred dollars. Um, this tends to make the market believe that this card is undervalued and this card is actually worth more, which could in turn um, boost the market up, meaning increase the price of Tyler Hero cards just because of this one fraudulent sale. Um, these are the things that we look out for, especially when checking on eBay prices and gathering data for the price updates. Um, so yeah, I guess my tip, especially when checking out the latest prices for um, NBA cards is to be realistic. If you see a card that's listed for that's sold that's been sold for such a low price, um, that's probably fake. If you see a card that's cheap but it's sold for like a really high price, that's probably fake as well. Um, yeah, that's about it. If it's too good to be true, it ain't true. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a question for everyone, just for a hot take. Um, you know. We're down to uh, eight teams left. Right, and basically, the deeper the team can get into the playoffs, the higher, uh, generally speaking, uh, their card prices can get. Who do you guys think will number one get to the finals, and number two, who will have the biggest percentage increase by the end of the finals? Let's go. <laughs> I'll answer first. Um, I'm wearing my shirt to support. Dana. <laughs> Dana. Dana. I'm calling it uh, Lakers in the finals. Great show, baby. And Dana. LeBron, Prism, Silver, 
ESA 10 will have the biggest <laughs> percentage increase. Grabe yun. <laughs> but that's Dana. just me. What, what do you guys think? <laughs> ikaw lang niya, pare. Ikaw lang. Joke. I can agree, Justin. So, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Ah, <laughs> okay, what about Justin? I know Justin has his yeah. argument. Sir. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> yes, sir. I think I'll pick the wrong LAP mata, pero... <laughs> No, pero, dude, let's be realistic here. <laughs> Joke lang. Pero for number one, yeah, I feel like the Clippers. No bias yun, eh? Not like I'm a fan or anything. Gosh. <laughs> no bias, no, pero, man. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard, dude, I, if I name their whole roster, practically all of them can be all, all stars. Oh, nina man. Medyo matagal pa si Landry Shamet. Pero, yeah, man, their roster is one of I'd say the best in the league put together defensively and offensively uh, I feel like they'll get past the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals and hopefully the Nuggets later but <laughs> I see them yeah I see them reaching the finals and for a card increase um, Paul George I don't think Kawhi. it's gonna be anyone Paul George, we expect what? <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be anyone we expect like a LeBron or a Kawhi because they're already I feel like Possibly. it's gonna be more JT. God forbid, God forbid the Celtics win. Jason Tatum's cards are gonna skyrocket. Yes, I feel, I feel, <laughs> I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, Anthony Davis isn't really uh on the bronze level yet. So, but if he wins the trip and makes a crazy ass shot or finals MVP, crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. If he wins finals MVP, right there. yeah, dude. Those cards are gonna. Jump like crazy. Paul George, though, playoff P. Yeah, you never know. Thing. You never <laughs> low key, low key. Pandemic P, bro. Pandemic low key, low key. P. But no one's expecting Paul two. George to. Yeah. Paul George, actually. Paul George, maybe. Yes, sir. Paul George, number two. If I had to give playoff a number two. Three. Just because Fire everyone's Saturday counting him out. Laker fan <laughs> really? for, for, for a percentage oh, increase. God. Like, for example. I doubt, you know, bro. Everyone's counting but him out. Everyone's beating. <laughs> but PG have a card. Yeah. The prison, but CP. Yeah, prison RC. Ah, oh, yes. No, first, first prison base lang. He doesn't oh, have a prison RC. But yeah, it's, I feel like it's gonna be more of the slept on players when we look at Kawhi and LeBron. But if Kawhi wins uh, three finals, <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know who else to win finals MVP. <laughs> probably gonna be him, but. Three. Marcus Morris, bro. Marcus Morris. <laughs> Another one of Calling my favorites. <laughs> all right. Every, all, every championship team needs one of those players. You got Ron, Ron Artest on the Lakers. I don't know who you have on the Raptors, but everyone needs a, a gritty player like that on their team. And yes, sir, Marcus Morris. Watch out, of, watch out on his cards, guys. <laughs> I don't know. Lot, but... <laughs> okay, yeah, what about the next one? Um... <laughs> What about for uh, next season? Because if I'm not mistaken, uh, the finals will probably end around um, early October. Uh, what about for next season? Um, what do you guys think people can look forward to? Um, are you um, sold on the rookies that are upcoming? Or are there people who are... Um, are there players that you think are not being as noticed as much as they should? Yep. What do you guys think of the future yep. for next season? Um, there's a lot, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Favorites. But I personally don't think that the next group, the next class would be as good as the one this uh, um, I've I've read a lot of I read a lot of things like a lot of people thought, like on the internet saying uh, the the boxes this year, meaning the prison boxes or whatever, they would actually go higher in terms of their pricing because the, the, the rookies next year won't be as good. Um, okay. But yeah, as, aside from that, I think undervalued players right now, RJ Barrett. Yes. There's a lot RJ of undervalued Barrett. players right now. I just it's not a RJ player. Barrett for me, bro. <laughs> Can I flex my RJ Barrett cards? <laughs> yeah, flex, show him, show him. Patingin nga, patingin. You got a PSA 10, yeah, right? Bro. Yeah, dude, talaga, oh. You know, naka-ziplock pa. Eh. <laughs> you already know, bro. You already know the ziplock. Labas mo, labas mo, bro. Labas mo. 
The old, the old call, guys. <laughs> PSA 9 nata yun eh. PSA 9 nata yun eh. The old call. Eight naman, bro. Eight naman, bro. SGC 8, Ben. SGC 8. <laughs> yo, yo. But then, don't, don't, don't disrespect SGC, man. Did ah, you guys see the recent yeah. auction? SGC yeah, 10? People are actually saying that SGC grades tougher than PS8. That's why a lot of people from the States, they send their cards to SGC first. And if it the Jordan back, clear it. Yeah. If it's 10, they crack it. It's SGC. Yeah. 10 or 9.5, they crack it. They send it to PS8. And I... Mm. So far, I've read that the, the returns have been great. Like when it comes to getting a PSA 10 pack. It's been great. It's hard kasi for grading eh. Kasi... Medyo subjective dun sa nag-grade ng card mo eh. That's kung yeah, good day siya. That's true. Puro ka tens. Pero kung bad day siya, pare, kung good luck. Kung may pinaaway yun, bagong grade ng card. Oo, oh, kaya pinag-grade ng <laughs> boss six. niya. Yari na, bro. <laughs> PSA 6 na yun. Ah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pero that's also why some uh, collectors, they opt to just keep them in mag. Because they don't hmm. see the point in getting it graded. Because it's just gonna end up like that. Just put it in a mag. But yeah. profit-wise. Profit, oh, right. so you get it graded, man. You gotta get it graded. But so, yeah, but it's always important to make sure you're at least gonna get a nine or a ten. Yeah, if, if, if it's lower yeah. than a nine, it's basically a yeah, raw. Say nine just or ten. It. Yeah, if it's eight, sell it raw. <laughs> yeah, just crack it and sell it raw. <laughs> Yo, I am honestly so hyped for next season because mm-hmm. if you think about it, there's so many superstars this playoff. But yeah. we forgot about Kevin Durant. Kyrie, Curry, yes. Clay, but yeah, yeah man, next season, I'm honestly bubble. so, yes sir, I'm honestly so excited for next season, like starting with free agency lang, the off season, and all of the trades that are gonna happen, um, possibly honest, we don't know, but yeah, moving forward, uh, moving towards the draft and all the um, new incoming rookies, we have potentially one of the most hyped players other than Zion and LeBron, and like hype-wise, uh, like from LaMelo. Yeah, I feel like he's going to be better than Lonzo for sure. I think that's pretty that's common that's common knowledge. Right? <laughs> but yeah, um I also see the dynamic of the NBA landscape changing pretty much like what I said. Um uh the Golden the six time NBA champion Golden State Warriors and the Nets led by KD and Kyrie, they're both potentially both those teams are going to be at full strength. And yeah, man. They're probably gonna enter championship contention, which can, you know, more cards to invest in, more exciting games to watch. But it's also crazy to think about who are the players that are gonna pop off next season. Who are, uh, um, this like just this playoffs. We had Jamal Murray putting up Michael Jordan playoff numbers. But yeah, uh, will Donovan continue to rise to the top? Can Murray sustain the success? Because against the Clippers, not really so far. But yeah. Or what about Trey Young? <laughs> We've, I think we're all sleeping Trae on Trey Young. Can we talk about him and Luca getting? Yes, much sir. Let's do that. Wait, let but, let's not talk about Trey. Let's keep his prices low, please. <laughs> <laughs> let's keep his prices no. low, bro. <laughs> but no one's talking about Trey, man. And he was he almost was he almost stole Rookie of the Year from Luca. So. He might be the best player in the NBA right now. We don't know because he's not in the bubble. But... I honestly think the, the Hawks are going to make the playoffs next year. It's impossible oh, wow. to defend that pick and roll. Damn. I mean, you got Capella. It's a you heard it here Capella first. And Trey, uh, Capella, take... Trey, and Collins. Uh, how confident that, are you, bro? How confident are you? How confident? <laughs> you heard it here first, bro. Guaranteed, bro. Guaranteed. No, that the Hawks are going to make the playoffs. Bahay oh, lupa. Bahay lupa. Bird Veracruz with the hot take. <laughs> Bro, I'll I'll put my RJ Barrett cards on the line. <laughs> oh, I, oh yeah. 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 yeah, No, but R, RJ Barrett included, man. Super slept on. He was. Let's yeah, not forget, yeah, he was a top three pick with Zion and Ja, but he's not in the bubble, so he lost uh, lost a lot of pipe. But who are we talking about before Ja? Uh, before RJ? Three, uh, dude. He's putting. I see. He almost stole. Yeah, uh, I see. And if the Magic can make the playoffs, man, I'm pretty sure the Hawks next season can make the playoffs. With I think the Cavs can make the playoffs as well. What do you guys think? Uh, that's, uh, I think the, the Suns will make the playoffs, bro. Uh, <laughs> Let's go, bro. We don't book. know Kevin getting older. Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, yeah. 
Lahat na bro, lahat na. <laughs> oh, I, see, lahat na I think the bro. NBA should expand, bro. <laughs> the NBA should expand. There's so much good players like plug together and same team. You got. Grabe naman ko lahat ng Makati teams, na, bro. Makati. Off naman. Yun. <laughs> no, like 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 most of the teams, like like Denver, bro. They're so stacked. I mean, they have MPJ. They have Jamal they're so Murray. Stacked, they have but they're playing Jokic. so. They, they played so bad against Utah. Like, well, that's a, different, that's a different story. <laughs> God damn. Jokic might not play also later, but yeah. He might not? Why? Uh, he has a sprained wrist. Right. Go clip. Wow. <laughs> so sure win now. Let's go, MPJ! <laughs> <laughs> ball, ball, bro. Ball, ball, good start. Ball, ball. <laughs> oh, man. Another good example. Another, another slept ball. on dude, man. Lonnie well, Walker, the fourth. Lonnie there, boy, there are a lot of Lonnie players, boy. Talaga, dude. <laughs> well, okay. may problema siya sa finishing though. Kita naman pero the potential two eh. Sa two play pa lang eh. pare. Yeah. You guys think of ano? What do you guys think of Dilo next year? Slept on Kyle. Dude, he's only what 23, 22. Below 25 for sure. Ah, I kind of doubt the Wolves. But like like you said, the East is wide open, so the Cavs, the Hawks, any of those teams can make the playoffs. But the West is pretty... I think that's pretty given already. Yeah, the West the team. Is, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Jasper, that's... who are you gonna load up on before next season? Or who do you want to at least? Yeah. Kawhi, though. I think I want Culver. I want Culver uh, to increase in price, bro. <laughs> well, I have five five Culver's. <laughs> Jared Culver. Yeah, dude. slept on rookie, dude. Oh, yeah, he slept on. Yeah, this rookie so should, I just is hold. pretty stuck, man. I mean, hold. I pulled him from the last break. From SBB. <laughs> Shout out yeah, SBB. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's why I'm, I'm banking on him. You need support. Shout out SBB. <laughs> box break, eh. If you get a card that you're not a fan, you need to fan that, bro. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just the RC. I love the excitement, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love the excitement of box breaks. That's true. Yeah. It's an experience. <laughs> All right. So moving forward, I know everyone's excited for <laughs> next season. Um, a lot of players, um, a lot of rookies, a lot of up-and-coming people. And, yeah, I mean, if you're in it for the money, there's a lot of money you can make. Um, just do your research. But what about for MVP side? Like, I know the NBA is exciting. The future is exciting and all that. Um, Kirk is in charge of all the future projects. So, but these naman no mga <laughs> things in store for the people who are watching. Sure, sure. Okay. So, what we have next for you guys is we'll be doing some consignments, some buy and sell. And pretty <laughs> soon, pretty soon, expect maybe next week, we will have box breaks. So, stay tuned. Stay tuned. No. <laughs> Bame Zion Silver Auto Jan, guys. <laughs> In a crony, bro. Crony. <laughs> yeah. But Can you I'm imagine uh, pulling that dude from like more, a 900 pa. peso slot? Jeez. Yeah, yeah, bro. 900 slot and then who knows what you can get. <laughs> and then sure. eventually, who knows? You might have merch. Merch. Did I hear merch? <laughs> um, actually, joke. Wala pa, wala. Nagtanggal ng t-shirt bigla eh. the usual eh. Back to the usual. <laughs> but yeah, um, marami pang tinatago si Kirk, guys. Huwag kayo magalala. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess that's about it for today. Uh, we talked about a lot of the questions that the community had for um, sports cards and MVP. Um, you know, we talked about some basic knowledge, what card splitting is. Um, we gave an update on our boy Giannis. And our boys. <laughs> our boys, our boys. <laughs> They're our boys. <laughs> and of course, the part of timing, <laughs> your entry and your exit points, uh, marketing, transparency, what to look forward to for next season, and of course, what to look forward um, for MVP. And that's about it for the very hey, first... Wait lang, boss, boss. May question ako. What's up, what's up? 
regular thing na ba tong podcast natin or Oh, yes diba? sir. What's the plan? It is, it is. Um hey. for those of you who will be joining us moving forward, the podcast will be uh, a regular thing now. We're going to upload uh, weekly videos. Uh, stay tuned for our guests because uh, we're going to roll this out every Friday night and we have some exciting things in store. We got some pretty uh, big time names who are going to come on the show every now and then. I don't want to flex okay. yet. Gino kaya yan, bro? This is pretty exciting. Uh, this is the project that I'm heading and uh, yeah, hopefully di kayo magsawa sa akin. <laughs> but yeah, um, expect the podcast to uh, be a regular thing now, from now on, along with sure. other future projects of MVP. Yeah. Before that, oh, so, parang, what's gonna happen pala when basketball, the basketball season ends pala? And we can't, and basketball cards are kind of... Question, good question. Nako. Ikaw, Bert. What, what, what can we do kaya, Bert, no? It's, it's, it's gonna get really, it's gonna get really messy, bro. It's gonna get really messy when card season ends. Messy, ba? So, messy. messy. But then, with the help of MVP, <laughs> we, got you, we got you covered. We got you covered. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> I think it's the perfect breadcrumb. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, let's leave it at that. Yes, sir. Uh, Bert, can you run down our socials on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, our email, and then we'll be on our way out. Yeah, so you can reach us at, at my valuable player both in Facebook and on Instagram. And you can send us an email for, um, just for anything, inquiries, partnerships, whatever. Send us an email at assist at myvaluableplayer.com. And yeah, that's about it. And <laughs> all right, that's a wrap. Of course, on my right is our CMO, Bert Cruz. On my left, it's Jasper Balmas, our CFO. And then on the lower left is our COO, Kirk Reyes. And on the bottom right, not last but not least, Justin Francisco. And once again, of course, my name is Justin Alvarado. Thank you for joining us tonight. And this is the MVP Podcast. Peace out. You guys. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs> <Don't>. Okay, <laughs>